Hey, everybody. Um, thank you for coming to my presentation. My name is Jack Taranto. I'm a front end developer. Um, I work at Previous Next. Um, I've been working with Drupal for probably about 15 ish years, and I've been doing React stuff um, in Drupal for probably about four years or thereabouts. So yeah, in this um, session, I'm going to be building, walking you through building a very basic decoupled app using Drupal and some technology called React Query. So first up, I'll just give um, everyone a really brief um, walkthrough of the tech stack. So Drupal, um, I'm guessing everyone's heard of Drupal at this point. So we're going to be using a fresh um, vanilla Drupal 9 installation. Um, I've done very little with it. I've enabled the JSON API module um, and I've set up a really basic content type, which I'll walk you through in a minute. Next up is React. Um, yeah, I'm guessing probably everyone's heard of this too. It's made by the evil Facebook corporation. Um, I think I can say that because they've changed their name now. But yeah, I'm, I've bootstrapped it with the React starter kit. So that's also maintained by Facebook. It just gives you a basic React app setup. Um, and we're going to be building um, React components and um, using something called con React Context. And React Query is a technology you might not have heard of. Um, it's something that's created by a really smart guy called Hannah Lindsley, and sort of a framework for fetching and caching um, API data in React. Um, so I'll be walking through that. And I'm going to do it all through a live coding exercise. So. I've um, been sacrificing a really large number of goats um, to the demo gods. So you know, hopefully this works out all right. So yeah, first up, let's take a look at the Drupal site. So yeah, as I mentioned, it's just a vanilla um, Drupal 9 install. I've enabled the Claro admin theme and yeah, I've set up this movie content type and you know these are my top five studio ghibli movies so if we just jump into one we'll see the fields i've set up um so yeah we've just got the title field i've got this um media field which is probably the trickiest part of the api stuff so um, we'll be walking through getting media out of json api um I've got this WYSIWYG field, so there's, there'll be a point of making sure we grab the processed text from that um, field. And then, yeah, we've just got a couple of um, string fields there as well. And if we look at the front end, this is the Oliviero theme. Oh, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? We might... Um, we might not worry about building a decoupled application at all. That looks pretty good to me. Let's just leave it at that. Maybe not. Maybe we'll keep going. Um, so here's our JSON API response. And this is the URL I'm grabbing there. So um, yeah, it's got the include, which pulls in the um, media entity. Um, as I mentioned, probably the, the trickiest part there. So yeah, our, our JSON response has got everything in it. I haven't bothered filtering anything out. Um, in production, you can filter out all this field data that you're probably not going to be using. Um, but I've just got it, in, got it all in here to show you guys how that works. Here's our synopsis field. It's got the processed um, HTML, so this is safe to use, we can just pull that into React and render that directly. We don't have to worry about um, there being anything malicious in their script tags or anything like that. Um, and then we've also got our like field 
um, our media field data in here as well. So we're going to end up having to kind of drill into this to pull out our, our file um, URL so we can render that poster. Um, yeah, so that's the Drupal side. Um, and yeah, this being decoupled, we've actually got a separate application. So we're just using Drupal for the content. And our React app, which is empty at the moment, is going to be contacting Drupal, pulling this, this API um, response, and then rendering a bunch of movies inside it. So yeah, let's jump into the code. Um, I've just set up a basic project. I've got two folders here. The API folder has got a, this is where the Drupal 9 um, installation lives. And then I've got this app folder here, which is where our decoupled application lives. And this all comes from create React app. I've got like a bare bones um, project set up here with some components. Um, I've got some CSS here that I've written already. I'm really proud of this CSS. It's probably some of the best CSS I've ever written. So I'm gonna just check that out, you know? Um, but yeah, we may as well get started now. So the first thing we'll do, we'll start at kind of like the bottom level. So with the actual movie itself. Um, so yeah, we'll just call this component movie needs to take some props and the props are just going to be the um you know the fields that we've got in drupal and we can call them whatever we want but we'll just take the um, basic name that poster prop is going to be the url to the image so we'll enter all see not okay so yeah, it's a good time. To, it's a good um, process to validate these using prop types. So we'll do that here. And they're all string fields, um, but prop types are powerful for validating all sorts of data. Um, okay, so that's looking good at that point. Um, I'll start writing some HTML now. And yeah, as I said, I've got all the CSS written already. Um, just going to use an image tag and needs to have a class. And yeah, the source is just going to be that image prop there. Um, cool. And I'll hack in some alt text using the title. So um, I'll just paste in some HTML I've prepared earlier for the rest of it. Um, missed the ending tag there. So yeah, what have we got here? Um, we're just I'm just printing out all the props. So we've got our title year. This dangerously set in our HTML. Um, this is a React prop you can set on a div tag and basically React's way of saying, do you know you're going to be rendering out some HTML? Um, it's not dangerous in this case because we're going to be using that processed text value. So Drupal's handling um, all the processing and making sure that, you know, there's nothing dodgy in there. Um, so yeah, we just pass that through using that method. Um, and then, yeah, we just got the rest of the fields there. So Better just remember to import the CSS as well. Okay, so yeah, that's our movie component um, written. So yeah, next up, we're going to jump into the guts of um, React query. So there's a bit of boilerplate stuff to get um, React query up and running. Um, there's some components there that we need to implement first. And I'll kind of wrap them inside um, this component called a JSON API provider. So it's it's just implementing React query, but um, the implementation can be specific to, you know, JSON API. We can have caching settings in here and things like that, that 
you know, we might want to be unique. So yeah, just call that JSON API provider. Um, to use React Query, I need to grab, create this thing called a query client. It's pretty simple to implement. Um, yeah, just come this, all this just comes straight from React Query. Once I've created a new version of that, I can um, implement this component, which also comes from React Query, the query client provider. It just gets past a client prop with query client as its value. Um, and the whole application ends up getting wrapped in this provider. So we just need a children prop. And then we'll just pass that through there. Um, I won't bother with prop types in this case. So yeah, that's that's basically all you need to get uh, React Query up and running. So um, yeah, as I said, I'll wrap our application in it. So I'll just do that here inside this render function. Um, yeah, so now anything down the tree can use um, React Query. So I'm going to roll on my next component now. It's this movie provider component. Um, it's going to be fairly simple, similar, but this is where kind of the meat um, of you know the fetching and stuff goes down. So yeah, I'll just call it movie provider. Um, I won't worry about prop types for this one either. Um, so yeah, first up is to create the context. So um, in React, context is kind of like a, a store of a particular value. That value can be whatever you want it to be. So in this case, it's going to be the, you know, the list of movies that React query returns. And that means like any component inside your application can, can grab these movies and just pull them out um, with very little code. So yeah, I'll just call it a movie context. You just use React's create context function. You need to pass it a default value. It's best just to use null in this case because we want to be able to check, you know, if React query has fetched anything. And um, if it hasn't fetched anything, it's just going to be null. Um, that's good for like initial rendering of your application. So next up, we're, I'll create this uh, custom hook, which um, our components can use to get the movies. I'll just call it use movies. And this is just a good little trick. It's basically like a just a wrapper around React's use context um, hook. And you just need to pass it the context that you want to be using. Um, so yeah, now we've got that set up, I can create my movie context provider component. You just do it like that. It takes a value. Like I said, that value can be anything you want. Um, I'll fill that out in a minute. And yeah, we're going to be wrapping everything again. So just do that children thing. Um, yeah, cool. So now we actually get to do the fun part and implement the use query hook. So do that in the top of the component. Um, so React Query returns a, a whole object with a whole bunch of things. Um, you've got like values in there for is loading, is fetching, um, and the actual data of the, you know, your query function comes back in um, something called, just in the, um, a key called data. So I just use object destructuring to pull that out. Um, and yeah, use query is the hook. So you need to give your query a name query key that can be just any string and then you need to pass it a function so react query doesn't actually handle any of the fetching or anything like that it sort of manages the state itself and how you know how often it fetches and how it caches data all that kind of important stuff that you really don't want to have to worry about um, but it doesn't provide any kind of default way to actually fetch the data so yeah, we do that by just writing our own function um, that does it. So 
it's quite nice in that regard that you can have like a total totally custom layer. Um, it's handy for working with Drupal because you might have different APIs to access. So yeah, I'm just going to use default vanilla um, JavaScript fetch to do that, and I'll write that using the async um, function syntax, which is pretty neat. Um, yeah, so I want a response. We want to fetch it. Um, we need a URL. I'll just jump back to my tab and we're going to hit this same URL here. Paste that in. Um, yeah, so that's almost all you need. Um, there's no kind of um, default error handling that works with fetch and react query. So we just need to write that ourselves. Basically, you just want to throw an error if, you know, for whatever reason, um, the response is not okay. That way that'll trigger, you know, the inbuilt um, error handling that react query has. Um, yeah, so paste that in and then, yeah, I'm just going to grab the keys from our JSON response. And I'll do that using this neat um, object destructuring syntax. Um, we want to await that. Oh, I missed the await there too. Yeah, we want to await this JSON response now. Um, yeah, and then we can return that data to our use query hook. Um, however, that data is pretty gnarly. Like if we go back and look at it, there's like a, a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, we could just return, you know, whatever we wanted, but um, we could just return everything that's here, but it would be better to narrow it down for our application and make it um, a bit more. So another function which handles that and it's going to be a norm a process called normalizing um really just normalizing that crazy json api data um and yeah this is going to be just a custom function to handle this basically it's good to split all this stuff out um it makes it a lot easier just to unit test each individual function at that point so yeah this is just going to create a movies array and I'm going to loop over that data key that um, we're getting back from fetch. Cool. Um, so this is where things get um, a little bit tricky. We've got, we really need to get our, um, our file URL from here. It's kind of inside um, this array. So that this we're going up this ID here basically, um, and you know we have to get that ID out of the data array. So I've just got some stuff I've prepared earlier, but um, there's probably a whole bunch of neater ways to do this. But for now, I'm basically just filtering out our relationships um, array to get the ID for the media entity. And then it's a bit tedious, but you've got to do that again to get the file entity so that we can get the path. Um, so we can get the URL, sorry. So that's just filtering based on these IDs. Um, something you'll get used to when you're working with JSON APIs, the way it um, stores data in its um, responses. So yeah, then now that we've got that, we can push a new item into this movies array and it's going to contain the structure. So if we jump back to our movie component, it wants all of these props here. So we can structure our data in a way that will match this perfectly um, and that'll make it a lot easier to push stuff around. So yeah, that's um, that's the code there. So it's just looking through all the different pieces of the JSON API response and it's putting them in a really nice, neat little object that we're going to use later. Um, I've just hard coded the site URL in there. You could probably do that in a few 
better ways, but it will do the job here. Um, also making sure I'm getting that process key out of the WYSIWYG field. I'm not going to pass through any um, bad data. So yeah, now that's here, um, I shall return it. Okay. Um, and yeah, I just need to call this function now, pass it through both of those pieces. Um, so yeah, all, basically it, now I just need to add this function to my use query hook. So, virtual um, movies. Um, and I'll add the data there to the value. So whenever we call use movies, it's going to call, um, you know, it's going to get this data value and that data should be a nice, neat array of movies, basically. So I think that's finished. I've just got to wrap the application in the movie provider so the whole thing can get access to those movies. Paste that in. Um, so yeah, now we just need a component to render them. Um, this is the movie list component. Um, yeah, so another, it's fairly simple as well in this case. Um, it's just called movie list. It's not going to have any props because it's going to get its data from that hook. So, in the top of the component, we'll just ask for the movies and we use use movies. So, yeah, now we should have access to them. Um, We'll just put some conditional logic at the top here. We only want to render the list, you know, if there's anything there. So it'll be null or empty or whatever if it hasn't come back. Um, yeah, we've got a class I've already written for that. And yeah, I'll just do a map um, to loop over each movie. Okay, so yeah, we'll call in our movie component now. Um, so first things first, got like all of these um, props. We don't actually need to go and fill them all out because we know that our data structure is going to match what the component is expecting. We can just use um, prop destructuring and just go like that to bring in the whole movie. Um, we're using maps, so we do need a key and We've got the UUID for the movie as the ID um, there. So that's, yeah, that's really, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, that's going to grab the movies and render them out um, one by one. So, yeah, I just need to add that to my app here. Movie list. Um, doesn't take any props. Yeah, so I think that should be it. Um, just kind of quickly review everything. We've got our base level movie component with its markup. Um, it's including the CSS. We've got our boilerplate for React query. Um, we've got our movie provider, which is doing all the chunky stuff. Hopefully this works. If we have a problem, it's probably something in here that, that I've missed. Um, and yeah, we've got our application wrapped up in its providers. So yeah, let's jump into the browser and see if that's working. Oops, refresh. Oh, it's not working. What's going on here? Oh dear, oh dear. We've got a whole bunch of network requests failing. Cause, cause cross origin. This sort of thing comes up all the time, doesn't it? JSON API doesn't have any cause headers. So um, we need to add cause headers to JSON API before we can actually request any data from it. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do it in Drupal. You can add some code to like the services.yaml file, but a really neat way to do it in this case um, 
is just to use an event subscriber. So I've just got a custom module here. I can drop this in. Um, and I've already pre-written it because it's a bit gnarly, but paste that in. Um, so yeah, this is a Drupal event subscriber. It's looking for the JSON API path. So whenever it sees that path, it's going to add these two headers to the response for us. Um, and uh, these are the two headers, two headers you need for cause. Allow access control origin from anything. And you also need this very origin header as well. Um, that's important to make sure you can access the um, API from multiple domain names. So yeah, now that that's in, I just need to also add um, the YAML entry for it. So Drupal knows where to look. And I also need to clear my cache. Cache clearing, cache clearing, cache clearing, cache clearing, cache clearing, cache cleared, cleared, success. Um, Cool. Now we'll just refresh our request and yay, we've got our headers here now. These are the two headers we've added. Um, if we go back to React, look at that. React query will automatically refetch data when you focus the window. So it's refreshed, it's got those new headers and yeah, it's brought in our movies for us. Um, so there's a lot of neat features in React Query. I'll just take you through a handful of them now. Um, the dev tools are quite great. Um, yeah, I'll just add them in. You add them into your um, query client. So yeah, you can you can have these in here the whole time, and they won't get built if you're not in uh, you know if you're in production development mode. They won't get added. So you can just leave them in your application like that. Um, that gives you this little icon in the bottom corner, which you can bring up. Um, and yeah, now you can see we can see the actual query. So yeah, we've got our movies query. Um, you can see if it's stale or not. Um, it's kind of a process that React Query uses to, to determine if it should refetch new data. So you can set any amount of time um, for data to be stale. Um, and then once it's stale, it will go back and refresh, refetch it. So it'll hit the API again and pull in new data. And it does all of that without triggering um, any new renders as well inside your app. So it's super quick. We can see our data that's been returned here as well. Um, yeah, you see the settings and stuff. Um, how long things are caged for and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that, that whole kind of live refresh thing that it does is um, a bit of a game changer for various different applications. So we can see like we've got four movies in the list here. We're missing um, Howl's Moving Castle. So it's, um, it's unpublished at the moment. If I publish it, and then jump back to the application, it's done another background refresh and it's added that um, that entry for us. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts of use cases around that if you need to have um, up-to-date data being displayed. Um, and yeah, it's kind of reliant, I guess, on your backend. On, on your APIs being really well cached and um, you know having proper cache tags and all that kind of stuff as well. But it is a super handy feature. Um, yeah, so I've been speaking for half an hour, so I think that's that's everything I had for my um, yeah for my demo and live coding exercise. So I'll. Um, yeah, put it out there for some questions.
Hi, thanks, Jack, for the uh, live coding. Definitely your sacrifice worked. <laughs> you can see all everything working. Um, there are a few questions uh, coming in, but I'll start with uh, one of the ones is where would personalization, so if I were to personalize this site, right, and, uh, you know, based on the user who's visiting this, um, this site, the React part, where would the personalization will be performed? Which layer, whether it be Drupal or React? And, you know, so how, how, would, that, how would you handle that part? Yeah, um, yeah, personalization is an interesting one. Um, I guess it requires like having some information about the user, which needs to be stored somewhere. Um, so yeah, you've got that that info that would you know that would have to live on the Drupal side of it. Um, the front end knows who the user is, presumably, so you can just do a request back to Drupal to get that info, and then the actual like logic of what the personalization should display to that user would all then you know ideally happen in the front end so um you'd have you know all that logic written in your front end framework um and it's really just using the data that it gets back from from drupal to display that and that might revolve involve like making more requests back to drupal to get different data or something like that but yeah, I think the front end um, is super capable and everyone's got a super fast device in their pocket, which can, yep. you know, do all that kind of logic really quickly. You definitely don't want to be performing um, that logic on your servers, you know? Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks for that. Uh, the other one we just got it is uh, just adding like course headers, which you did in the just to you know, um, cross-reference query. Um, does that pose any security risks? Um, um, security risks from querying the APIs or? Yes, yeah, like you, you just allowing star or maybe you would be doing in production different way, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, in this case, these are, yeah, these are like, yeah, I mean, you can push with JSON API, but like ideally you're just doing get requests. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess that comes down to the security of your application, but it's always good to have these APIs open um, so that you can just pull the data out of them without too much fussing yeah. around, I think. But. Yeah, on the same note, I've just read in discussion forum, Stuart posted that alternatively you can proxy the API from the front end which could be another way. Yeah, um, okay. Cool. Um, the last one we have here, and plus if anything more comes up, is uh, you've been working with JSON API. Um, what are the limitations um, of the JSON API or Drupal in this case, like as a content store who's, who's giving you the content? Um, so what are the uh, limitations of JSON API, uh, which we should be aware of? Um, when doing can, yeah, JSON API has got lots of it's got lots of limitations. Yeah, it's um, I mean, as you can see, just the, the process of pulling out data, um, you know, included data, especially when you're working with paragraphs, it's um, you know, can be a bit of a nightmare. Um, but like besides all that, there's a there's a hard limit on on how many. Um, items you can get back. You can only get 50 items back in one go. So you kind of need to be aware of that if you're if you're trying to query it for for large amounts of um, for data in data in one go. Um, yeah. And yeah, Lee Lee mentioned in his keynote this morning the revision stuff. So that's always been yes. a major limitation pulling out older revisions and. You know, anything that's not published basically is, is really difficult to get at. So, yeah, that's going to be going away soon. I think that'll make it a lot more powerful. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you for that. Um, um, I'll just wait from anybody else has any other questions. Uh, there's one question from uh, from Stuart, which I'm, I just was. Uh, yeah. Out. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, 
So it's, is the live updating following the API, uh, a live updating following the API or using web sockets? If not sockets, have you looked at decoupled Drupal with sockets? Yeah, I haven't actually. So it's, I mean, it's just following the API. It's doing whatever, whatever you tell it to do inside that query function. It literally just runs that function and then gets the data back. It compares the data and then it kind of decides whether it should update or, um, you know, just not do anything and update your app at all if the data hasn't changed. So. Um, yeah, I guess you can do anything that you want in that function, but in this case, it's just it's just polling the API. So yeah, ideally that um, is heavily cached, um, which it almost always is. So yeah, but you haven't I haven't um, done anything with WebSockets. Thank you for that. Hmm. Any other questions? Um, um yeah react overview um yeah so i mean that's that i think that's the that's the beauty of the decoupled approach um it doesn't really matter what framework you use um yeah, you, it really just depends on your organization and the capabilities that you have available to you, um, what your developers prefer working in. So um, like at, at the start, like I've been working with React for quite a few years now. Um, I haven't really done much stuff with you at all. So I've just kind of focused my, my, my work on React and, you know, that's why, that's why I'm able to um, use it at this point. So. I guess it takes, um, you know, that's really question, personal question for them, the organization and, and you, what, what framework you want to use. They're all equally as powerful. So, yeah. In your experience when, with this decoupling things, have you ever seen a site kind of using a widget from React and a widget from Vue? Or is that possible at all? Like, you know, having a part of site rendering from Vue and a part mm -hmm. of site like just to you know just to kind of understand the power of decoupling I mean. mm. yeah i guess it depends on 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 what you're doing um we're we're doing a lot of partial decoupling so we're running like a drupal site with a drupal theme and then we've got a like a series of apps inside the theme um and they're you know they're predominantly using react but um you've got a i guess you know in that in that approach Drupal's still rendering the page but you can drop any kind of application in that you want so you could definitely use multiple frameworks side by side um i guess the main thing is there you probably wouldn't want to you're going to have heavy um you know each each framework's got its own right yeah. heavy library that comes with it but yeah Yeah, have we got have we got any more questions there? We can probably wrap up if not. Um, I don't see any more questions. Yeah, I think that was a very lovely presentation and you know live coding. Thanks for sharing that with us. Cool. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much for um for coming along. Yeah. Thanks.